Hi guys, it's Alyssa and welcome back to my channel, The Divine Venus. Um, I am going to do a pick a card today because I felt like it was the best thing to do to talk about the current energies we're in and the most important thing that you really need to know about your future right now. So I thought it was, it was a perfect time to do this, but of course at any time if you need to come back here and you know try to find out something else about your future, it's going to be immediate or far. It doesn't matter. It's all about what spirit the universe kind of wants to tell you right now. And so that's what we're doing. Okay, for anyone who's never been here before or been in a pick a card situation, because I don't do many of these on my channel, this is going to be pile number one. This is pile number two. This is pile number three. And that's pile number four. You can meditate on these four a little bit if you want to. We have an amethyst right here, um, tumbled obsidian have an evil eye and rose quartz. So you kind of can focus on these if you want to pause, if you want to pick because of the stone or use your intuition, whatever you want to do, uh, just choose which one and then go into the timestamps below to figure out which one you want. And I will give you the reading at that time. Okay, let's get into this right now. For those of you who picked pile number one with the amethyst. Now the amethyst is good for balancing chakras. It really deals with your nervous system and making everything kind of feel better. So I feel like it's very healing. It's also protective in this energy. So I feel like that's going to have a lot to do with what we are shown here. Okay, so the first card we have is the king of summer, honorable, devoted, mature, and warm-hearted. Also a romantic partner you can trust. Excellent advice that comes from the heart. Uh, the five of spring, opposing goals arising from differing opinions, feeling at odds with oneself or others. Then we have the seven of winter. There's a better choice, not seeing things clearly. And here we have the law of attraction, assembles all cooperative relationships. Then on top of this, we have compassion, the sun, Juno, Trust your path and don't dim to fit in. Let's get through this. Okay, so for pile number one, um, the first thing I wanted to start off with was the fact that you picked the amethyst, which I really felt like it, you need some form of healing and protection. And in the future, what you really need to know, like what you're heading into, might feel a little bit scary at times. Um, and it might not be something that I'm feeling that you might be having a little bit of anxiety about it. Um, you know that something's coming and you don't know necessarily what it is. Um, I got this compassion card, which is as you pray each day for greater compassion, a new self is born, drawing new people and experiences. Dear Lord, help me feel ever deepening self-acceptance. May I see myself as you see me. I feel like the anxiety is not necessarily a fear of failure, but a fear of being bigger than who you are right now. And I'm getting that with um, this card, don't dim to fit in as well as trust your path. So if you knew you would be supported, what would you do? And are you dimming your light in order to fit in? And this happens a lot with people when, um, you know, they have to kind of level up. And you know that maybe no one in your family, no one in your friend group, no one else is leveling up. You might have like friends or family or uh, anybody who's just not going to level up the way that you're going to level up in the near or maybe even further away future. But I feel like you're feeling it now that this is the thing. You're like, I have a decision to make or it's coming and it's going to be asking me if I'm going to take the risk that's going to remove me from my situation. You see, we also have the sun. This is like following your heart, following your biggest, you know, life need. Um, we also have the law of attraction. This law of attraction assembles all cooperative relationships. Now, these are actually law of attraction cards. So the fact that you did pull the law of attraction assembles, it's the main card of the deck. Um, there's a vortex of becoming, a vortex that contains all the requests, all the amended requests, and each and every detail of each and every asking that has emanated from you. And so I believe that you've wanted this your whole life. You felt like you could you could get it and that it would everything would be great for you if you could just follow your path into this, you know, new situation and you're there, you're at the precipice of this and you're afraid because 
sometimes to be careful about what you wish for because you just might get it but this isn't like in a negative way this is actually in a really good way like you've you've drawn it to you've manifested it you've wanted it you've done the inner work and now you can possibly go into this new light and i mean really step into the sun right um i also pulled in these fairy decks you got the king of summer honorable devoted mature and warm-hearted which is a romantic partner you can trust excellent advice that comes from the heart getting involved in a culture or creative endeavor um which i feel like it is like it's all just about your heart you're devoted you're mature you're you're warmed up to this idea it's the next step in your existence but here it comes with the five of spring which is opposing goals arising from different opinions feeling at odds with yourself or others overly ambitious people like so you're like you're ready to do this right but no one else is ready for you. So this just kind of confirms what I saw before. And you also pulled the seven of winter, which tells you there's a better choice, not seeing things clearly, running away from the truth. So I think that you are about to possibly not go through with it. And this is telling you, you know, please do it. Please go through with it. You're not going to ever fail if you just keep pushing past the obstacles because it's ready for you. And okay, and so I also pulled the Juno card. Now, the Juno is in astrology. This is like... It's really pretty. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. Juno is Jupiter's wife. Now she can be jealous. Um, so that's a lot of what I'm seeing here. She's kind of the jealous cuckold wife. Well, she's the one who watches Jupiter or Zeus because she's also Hera go out and see like, I mean, while she's sleeping and impregnating all these other people and these other women. And she's just like home by herself feeling like, she has to stay home. She has to like be there because she's the queen of this castle. Uh, but she's super, super jealous of Zeus that he gets to go out and super jealous of all the women that he's like sleeping with and everything. And so when I see this, I'm like, I feel like, I mean, with the sun, with all this is like, there's two ways you could look at it. I've, and like, I don't think that it's coming up with the fact that people are jealous of you. I think you might have a deep envy of other people who actually get to go do what they want to do and what we don't realize about envy is that it's actually fear okay and i'm not saying that someone's not envious of you but if you haven't moved forward yet maybe you haven't even gotten into that place and where you're just sort of envy becomes paralyzing because it's fear we do it so deeply that we only know how to sabotage our own good luck when we are so jealous of another person's and so i do think that this wants you to align with you like your own path like trust trust your path not somebody else's not what's good for somebody else and sometimes it's going to be like pretty scary because you are like you know <laughs> you're it's it's scary to trust your own path because your own path is scary you watch someone else take a big risk and it's like a blockbuster movie or an oscar winning performance you do it yourself and you have to be the one to deal with all these challenges so i just think like don't let fear hold you back don't be afraid of being the one that like leaves your home and and goes out on your own journey maybe and even i think that juno never left because i think juno felt like she she would lose everything if she left Zeus. Like that's where she was queen. But I, I kind of feel like in this case, it's like, no, you don't need to be the queen. You can be the king. You can go into your own light, like really step into your path and start to see it. Like don't dim to fit in just to stay where you are because where you are isn't going to be helping you anymore in the future. And so that's what it wants you to know. Like you have a choice you're going to have a choice. It's coming up. Do you take the risk or do you not? And that risk is going to change your future forever. But if you don't go, you're going to be completely envious of everyone else who might have made that risk. And I mean, really, you do need to have like compassion. Pray each day for greater compassion for the new self is born. Drawing new people and experiences desire it start to really desire it too um and allow yourself to know that you have desired it or maybe maybe you know what like because it is more collective maybe you haven't started desiring it yet maybe this is just telling you align yourself manifest it law of attraction manifest this shit now like get into alignment and it's hard to manifest things with just your mind and this is really important especially while gemini 
the Gemini North Node is happening. If you manifest things with your mind right now, you're going to get really thrown off. You have to manifest it with your whole entire body. You have to be in alignment from top to bottom for a manifestation on what looks like a huge caliber like this to actually work out. Otherwise, it's just shallow and it is more scary and your body's not ready for it. You get a lot of anxiety, um, even if your head is kind of there. So make sure you're completely aligned, like you emotionally are supported. That I mean, I think that's where this compassion is too. Like, are you, are you emotionally supporting yourself, your whole self, self-accepting like your real desire and your real passion, not something that aligns with anybody else or aligns with what you think, but it's just your whole body, mind, and soul in this energy. Um, and then I believe, so if I'm looking at like the whole entire, the whole thing for you um, in your pile number one, you need to know that in the future, your life can change and it can be great and it can be everything you wanted it to be. Um, and that can happen. But there's also the downside that if you don't take the risks and you don't align yourself with that path, it won't happen. And you'll be struggling being the second runner up your whole life. And um, this is just the call for you right now. And I feel like that's what you needed to hear about your future. Okay, group number one, I'll talk to you. Okay, hi guys, if you picked pile number two, you picked the obsidian and the obsidian is really good for uh, protection and getting into the truth of the matter, mental health issues, as well as kind of diving down into the unknown. So let's see what we have pulled right here. Uh, first, let's see, we have the Empress, time to take action, the power of creativity, 10 of spring, ask for help from others, all work and no play. The King of Autumn, compassionate and accomplished, charismatic and gifted. Charismatic and gifted. And then everything is always working out for me. The self-sufficiency. The earth. The last quarter. And then we have share your voice and inner temple. So let's get into what this means for you. Okay, hi, group number two. You guys picked Obsidian, which is a black rock. Obsidian showing you that you are about to go into the unknown. Um, I feel and I felt kind of like when I grabbed this <laughs> one, that this is a very heavy, like it's heavier. It's got the same amount of cards in it as everything else, but it's just a heavier deck. So I am a little bit like kind of wondering like what's going on? Like, and so what? what is the future going to hold? It does feel a little bit darker. Um, and since group number two, I pulled Earth here and the um, the last quarter moon. And in the group of four, I pulled the sun. And I feel like the Earth is like this dark part, but it's also a very fortunate part in your life. And so I, I'm getting this idea that there is a feeling of like isolation. We have like self-sufficiency right here. The ultimate self-sufficiency is relying on God. It doesn't mean hiding in a cave and saying, I don't need people. Instead, it's saying God is my source and I'm willing to receive all the help, love and support that wants to come. And actually, I don't believe that that means like, I mean, I think it means first accepting that you don't have to chase after anything. If it wants to come, it's going to come. And that is going to make you feel a little isolated. And then we also have, the empress and the empress herself she's like this queen and she sits in her throne and she has whatever she wants and people do come to her but um she does it through her own actions and her own abilities not through anybody else's i mean it says time to take action the power of creativity sex success that allows for a life luxury here so we are getting like there's a deep dark place of creation you know like how the earth was dark and then created from that blank space. And so I think there's something going on here. Even the King of Autumn, I pulled compassionate, accomplished, charismatic, gifted. You have a deep talent, like a really, really deep talent. And this talent is going to be used in the future. Um, yeah. It says, the, be assertive when it comes to what you know is right. Everything's going your way, a good person or company to work for. I think that good person is you for you to work for yourself. Um, I did pull the Ten of Springs too, and this is kind of going against what I said previously, but it says, ask for help from others, all work and no play, being weighed down by too many responsibilities. I feel like it's more so, it's kind of telling you when it's like mixed with these, the Empress and the King of Autumn and 
you know, this asking for help from others. And then with the inner temple and the earth, it's really about you are going to build it and they are going to come. Like that's the energy here. It's not about you asking help. Don't chase after the help. Start doing it first. And to believe in this, like everything is always working out for me. Nothing ever goes wrong because every piece of contrast, no matter how wrong it seems to be, is always helping you clarify what you do want. And that does come from, I just keep using the word isolation, isolation. It comes from a period of isolation. You don't know what you want when your energy is naturally connecting to other people's energy and you're getting them all on you and it feels really icky, but you don't know where you end and they begin or the vice versa. And that's what happens when you're next to people. It's actually a problem that works more in women than men because more women See, feel the need to have friends and to talk about their issues with their friends to get it off their chest where most men might spend time in isolation and um, just kind of work and be in their path and I'm not saying that's why men are more successful but I do think it's when men kind of know what they want and they have more self-sufficiency than women do but it's not like women can't do that too it's just to have to take that that time away from for yourself is sad because women want to be seen and this is some of the energy I'm really getting okay so now like in this we have the inner temple devotion tune into the portal of your heart and then share your voice come out of the cave persecution expression see so it's like you first go in and then you go out you first got to create from within you got to be in darkness and isolation and the earth but then you come out and even like the last quarter moon so now the last quarter moon it comes after the full moon when the full moon's bright light is waning down into the new moon the darkness which is the, also the new beginning so the last quarter moon is the last kind of challenge square to between the full moon and the new moon but it's really it's on its decline and so there's really this feeling of you descending into hell. And so I think that's what it's telling you about your future. It's not about, and I say descending into hell, hell itself, when I say that, it's not about like something horrifying. It's about being willing to go into the unknown, into the darkness, because what you're gonna get there is gonna be amazing. And what you're gonna find, and you think about Persephone and that energy too, because Persephone, she, when she was all light, they say like Demeter, her mother, treated her like a child. She was dressed up like a little girl, even though she was already, you know, a maiden, she was an adult, she could do things, but she acted and dressed like a little girl. When Hades stole her and dragged her down to hell, that's where she became who she is, okay? Now, there's a whole Stockholm Center, we have to get into that, but if you think about it, it's like what Persephone then became was better. And she was able to take over after Demeter and bring in the springtime and go back into the fall. And we do need to have these like winters and summers and springs and falls of our life in order to get better. And so that's what Persephone teaches you. You go down into the darkness, but that's where your queen, the dark queen is a real thing. That's where you get in touch with your physical self, with your body, with what it can make. And this is what energy, even if you're a man, this is the energy of that. It's like going into the darkness to pull out the great things. And so like isolation, not being seen for a little while, maybe getting off of social media, but knowing the future that holds for you, you are the empress, you have everything. The empress lives in luxury. She has money. She's got anything that she needs to just create into like, lug like success that allows for a life of luxury from creation. Like, can you imagine that? I feel like you're working from home. You're making all these things you want to make. Um, I mean, really, like, and if you know, like, nothing ever goes wrong. Everything is working out for you. You are, you're going to be okay. If the things, that, it says the things that you call things going wrong in your life experience are actually only the distance between the things that are so right and your current perspective about them. Okay, so <laughs> the distance between, and actually that's like so interesting, this last quarter moon, I really feel like it brings that up to you too. It's like the distance between that clarity of the full moon and the new moon, which is the beginnings. It's just nothing's really going wrong. You're just between you're between the things that are about to go right and the new beginning that you're going to get from this moment of isolation or um, darkness and creation is going to give you everything you wanted. So don't be afraid to lose everything. OK, and even in astrology. See that Earth symbol, that Earth symbol in your chart is called the part of fortune. And uh, so the part of fortune is a lot of your earth and it's this um, calculation of your sun, your moon and your rising. 
And with that, it gives you that place on earth where you're the most fortunate. And I think that it's telling me here, you may not know what it is because you're sharing the energy with everybody else. But once you got into your own place, what would you know? Like, what would you be able to do for yourself? How would you find that fortune? You just have to be willing to descend and then come back up. Like now I kind of get this like 10 of spring, you know, you know, Persephone came back up. She looks like she's kind of walking out. She's almost like fire behind her, burning her, but those are her wings. And she's like, I'm in spring and all work and no play being weighed down by too many responsible responsibilities like coming up because then all of a sudden you realize that that's when you really have to work hard is when you're up. So spend a lot of like, I mean, just self time with you and you don't have to worry about having to perform for other people all the time. That's really kind of what I'm getting. I mean, I kind of, that's what I'm getting for you is like, there is greatness. There is money from your personal creation, whether it's an invention or maybe creation with your whole body. Maybe you're like in a very, you want to go into a creative field, whatever that is, this is what's coming to you in this energy. I'm being very powerful. Um, but you got to find it first. And so that is what you're going to be going through and not to be afraid because it's going to be good. It's going to be great. Okay. That is you group number two. Okay, guys, for those who chose the evil eye, now the evil eye wards off jealousy and um, evil feelings towards someone, usually stemming from envy. And children, this can make them very sick, but in adults, you tend to get a psychosis. And so if you pick this, there might be something going on like that in your life right now. So let's see what the cards have to say. So we got the ten of, or the nine of springs, protect the fruits of your labor, the two of spring, a bright future manifested through hard work and creativity. And the four of autumn, manage your resources wisely, achieve a balance in how you spend and save money. Our source is one of love, not condemnation. We have the health card, Saturn, and the waning crescent, the waning crescent moon. And then we have break the chain and Anna, grandmother of Jesus. So let's see what these cards mean for you today. Group number three, pile number three, you guys had the evil eye and I like how it's picking up the ring light. It looks like the eclipse. So I'm like really digging that right now. Okay. Um, you know, the evil eye is, is to ward off envy and jealousy from people, usually in children, because children are usually more prone to be people being jealous because of their youth and you want to protect them so they don't get sick. I've gotten the evil eye before I know, and it made me not physically sick, but, um, spiritually, like I was huge psychosis. So I feel like it kind of, it relates to this because I also pulled the health card for you here. It says health, allow me to divine to be tender and accepting of my body, no matter what ailments I might have. May I always know it's doing the best that it can. I have a feeling somehow like you're either walking into this or you're in it right now. And this is going to tell you a little bit what it's doing, but literally envy can make you sick. Like that is a real thing. It's a real energetic thing. Ancient cultures knew all about it. It's why the evil eye exists. Sometimes they call it like the oho. Like it's standard that envy makes you sick. Okay. Mentally and physically drained. And so there's something here that people are like really envious of about in you. And I'm kind of uh, looking, you have Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan, and break the chain, ancestral patterns, healing, and rewriting the future. Now, those two together kind of show me you have to break a cycle to move forward. And I kind of feel like if you're a woman, the one that's holding you back, the one that's making you sick, the most envious of you is your mother um, or a grandmother or a sibling. Most likely your mother, if it's, if you're a man, um, could be your father. It could also be your mother, um, your mother line, or, I mean, a lot of times with the father, it's the royal line, the man's line. So I do feel like there's somebody like, there's a real strong pull back and you're going to really be like walking into it, like really feeling like this, I need to break the chain. I am, I am being traumatized and abused without anyone ever opening their mouth. And that's what this evil eye can do. Um, you have the nine of spring, protect the fruits of your labor, prepare for possible challenges that lie ahead, environmental conservatism, nine of spring. Um, I like protect the fruits of your labor, 
prepare for possible challenges. I do think that's like protecting your energy and your fruits of your labor. What have you made? What do you have that makes somebody hate you? Like, and that's a normal thing with the mother is the mother um, feels this deep connection, you know, to the baby. And when the baby is born, if the baby for sure, if it's a girl or boy, sometimes it can, it can unconsciously, this is where postpartum depression comes in. And if a woman's not healing herself correctly, she can become very envious of the youth of her own child and not even realize it. And it's very common because especially if the woman is not, the mother's not doing what she wanted to do with her life. And so even if she might've been the person to push you to pursue your dreams, it doesn't mean that she's necessarily even okay with that. And so she might, there might be some sabotaging and it it might not be your mother. It could be someone else, but someone who's trying to sabotage you for sure. And that's why you need to protect the fruits of your labor. I also got um, four of autumn, manage your resources wisely and achieve a balance in how you spend and save money. Okay, so if you're living with someone and a roommate or someone close to you in your family's house, it's probably trying to tell you you're gonna need to move soon. A bright future manifested through hard work and creativity, partnering with others who share your dreams create progress being mean made i think that that's a thing like if you have to, if you're in a home environment that's not really allowing you to get out all of your energy because it is holding you back you are sick your health isn't good um at least save your money because i think that a change in environment that aligns you with people who are much more like you are going to it's going to be what changes your life and um all of a sudden you're better um, I'm just getting this really big thing like there's a divine plan for you. You're laying out the energy. Here's another thing. I mean, everything's just sort of kind of getting in my brain here. Our source is one of love, not condem condemnation. Who is condemning you? Like who is making you feel like less than you are? Because that is important because you have a gift inside of you and your future can be bright, but not if you're being condemned. This is just reminding me of um, the movie Tangled about Rapunzel, the Disney movie, and a Mother Gothel. Like Mother Gothel is one of the most evil villains because she comes up there and she is mean to her and gaslights her and mentally abusive and then tells her, but I'm all you have and I love you. Of course I do. And this is kind of something that I'm getting. That is not love. Someone who would treat you badly is not love um this is when you pay attention to the way you feel and deliberately choose more thoughts and feel good while you think them you'll begin to recognize the nature of your broader non-physical desires the majority of negative emotions that you feel are not because the subject of your thought is wrong but instead because you are condemning something that your source is not condemned your source is one of love not one of condemnation this is even it goes in on an inner an interfere we start to believe the things that we are told and that's why it's really important to be away from anyone who's telling you negative things about yourself i mean i think that most people are pretty naturally negative about themselves so you don't want to be with anybody who's projecting or gaslighting or trying to take from you because what's inside of you is love it's not a negative thing it's not something that is bad about you it's definitely something that you need to like give to the world. And so you need to escape the bad situation. I mean, and now I'm kind of even seeing it could be like a relationship you're in too. It doesn't have to be like that. It could be, you might be married to someone who's very abusive. Like I'm getting Saturn. So like Saturn, it's authority. And I got the waning present here too, which is, is the ending, the ending and Saturn. And so there's an Saturn is like your authority it can also be control over you. Um, can be the father figure, somebody who makes the rules and it's coming to an end or there needs to be an ending before there can be a new beginning. And that's a separation. So there has to be some form of separation between you and another person so that you can really, really live out your life and really protect your emotional, your mental and your physical health. Breaking the chain, rewriting the future, protect your fruits of your labors, manage your resources. You're going to have to make a move in the future. You're going to have to leave. You're going to have, it's going to be that moment where you got to run and you need to be prepared for it. I don't think it's telling you you're not running yet. You're still maybe in the situation. Maybe it doesn't look that bad on paper, but you need to start filling out the paperwork in your head for the leap that you're going to take. And it says the bright future manifested through hard work and creativity, partnering with others who share your dreams. I already read that one, but that really is like, it's a bright future ahead of you. People who actually care about the things you care about. They don't make you feel bad about who you are. You know, we're all different people. We're all unique. And there, 
Believe it or not, there's somebody who shares your wants and your dreams and your desires. There always is. There's 7 billion people in this world. There's always somebody out there who's not going to put you down because they believe in the same things you believe. And that's what I feel like you need to start understanding if that's in a love relationship or a familiar relationship or a friendship or a roommate or something like that. No more restrictions on you, but take those restrictions as they are now and put the hard work in because the ending is coming. The ending is going to come and you need to make the decision to get out. I just like, I keep getting that, like, you got to break the chain. You got to get out. And sometimes, you know, you're like, I can't get out right now. I know I can see it coming and I can't get out. And I, I do feel like for you in that sense, but I'm also having this big feeling that like, you're going to get, you're going to get the pull to move, like it's going to come. You just have to focus in on the out and not on the can't. And I guess that's a little bit of law of attraction energy here, but that really is like, if you can start aligning yourself with, I can, I can get out of here. I can move. I can be better. I can have a better life. There is a better life for me out here. I am, I'm not a piece of shit. You know, I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person. And I just don't know it yet because I'm surrounded by emotional stuffing and stagnation around who I am. Um, anyway, so that's my biggest understanding of this group number three. Like somebody is really jealous and because of that, they're trying to keep you down and you don't have to be down anymore and you're going to get a chance to leave. But just focus in on that. Work hard for that and um, it will come for you. And that is your group. Okay, guys, if you pick the rose quartz, this is definitely related to love, um, but it's also about the heart chakra and healing that and, you know, calming you and collecting you if you have any worry or fear about the future. Pink is one of the most ancient colors in the universe. Did you know that? <laughs> well, it is. So let's see what um, we have to hear today. So we have the Eight of Winter, Justice, or actually the Eight of Winter. You have what it takes if you only believe in yourself. Then we have justice. Take time to review the details carefully. You will win in the end. Prince of winter. Intellectual, a determined, focused, impulsive. Seek out an intellectual solution to your problem. Oops. And then we have right here. Feeling negative emotions means I'm launching requests. And over we have ambition. Aries. Cancer. Deep replenishment and trust the niggle okay let's see what these cards mean for you today okay, group number four you guys got the rose quartz and rose quartz is beautiful and it's rosy and it matches this card which i like um, it's really pretty but it's about love in your heart and i feel like even like rest but it's funny because when i pulled these cards and i'm looking at it it's like we got, we got some inconsistencies here, okay? So we're going to work them out. But we got deep replenishment, retreat, rest, be held. And then we have ambition, okay? This ambition is driving you, but you also just need to rest right now. It says, may I offer all my deepest longings to love itself and invite a divine plan beyond the mind's imagining. Please use me for the highest good. And I feel like it's because you have to download this information, this information on what you're ambitious about because it's like you know that there's something for you but you might not know what it is and so you're ready you feel ready and it's coming to you and the future is going to give you something great but you have to hear it first you can't act before you hear it and even like just trust the niggle what is that niggling feeling trying to tell you it's it's an interesting thing because i feel like it's in these cards somewhere because What's inside of you? You have something pointing inside of you, something that you need to know. It's going to come out. You're going to get that information and then you're going to be able to go because we have like Aries and Cancer, right? We have go for it and get home. So <laughs> you're getting both of these like on every level here. You have the Prince of Winter, intellectual, determined, focused, impulsive. Seek out an intellectual solution to your problem. Then you act quickly and decisively, sudden or unexpected changes. I feel like you're about to roll with the punches. Like that's what's happening in your future. Everything is going to change. If you feel like you're pushing really hard in a direction and nothing's happening, pull back because you're going to get the information and then you're going to go. 
take time to review the details carefully. We've got the justice card here. You will win in the end, fear and objective decisions. It's not about moving before you're ready, but it's happening soon. You're probably feeling anxiety and that anxiousness. I feel like even with the rose quartz, it's like you're running into the arms of love, like the new life for you. You have what it takes if only you believe in yourself, thinking that you're powerless when you're not, a lack of self-confidence that keeps you from getting what you want. So that could be like, if you feel maybe you're all like pushing and pushing and pushing in like a physical way, and this is about aligning your mind to the point where you actually understand that you do deserve the things that you really want, or maybe, you know, let's see, you're asking for what you want, but you're not able to like make it out in your head. You're like, I see it. I just don't see it. So I'm pushing and I just feel like this is, okay, this is like a dead end. And I'm also getting the, okay, feeling negative emotions means I'm launching requests. As more people observe hardship and strike a tense resistant pose and therefore disallow their own well-being, others use them as their reason to do the same. In very short time, a very negative pattern of resistance can sweep through your population. The good news in this scenario is that every moment that every person is feeling negative emotion about the economic state, vibrational requests for more abundance are launched. And those requests are heard clearly and responded to immediately by source. And so I think that you have been going through a rough time. I think that's what the thing is. It's like, you just don't think you can get it. You have all the ambition in the world. You're the person taking risks you're you're trying to do it and nothing's coming and it's like there are people out in the world who are afraid to do anything there are people out you know who can't because they're getting pulled down by something else and it's like you feel like you can do it like you you've been doing it you're going out and you're doing it in some way but there's something stopping you and I do think it's a mental block I think that's what we're getting here the cancer and Aries like these things it's like you're fucking tired and you're not like allowing yourself to replenish that body to really see like okay you already know exactly what you need to do next but you keep pushing in one direction that's not correct for you and so you need to just listen to that like valuable moment that the moment that tells you to go elsewhere and i feel like bringing up the story i was going to do a certain video today and some new concept and idea that i wanted and um and i was about to set it up and I had all these tarot cards in front of me that I was going to use just to like plan out the video. And I just came in my head that I needed to do a pick a card. And I'm like, I don't do pick a cards. <laughs> Everybody has pick a cards, but I'm very Jupiter and Aquarius and Uranus in the ninth house. Like I don't do stuff that other people do. I'm sorry. Even though I, I like the idea of them, I love pick a cards and this has been very fun for me. But I, I'm like, I, I don't do them. And I just got it in my like gut. I was like, you need to do this right now. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. And and then in that sense, I feel like you have this direction that you feel like you got to take. It's just you. It's what you're meant to be doing. But at the same time, it's not satisfying. And so you need to stop it right now. Like stop what you're doing and see if you can feel that feeling. And I, I feel like in these cards too, with the Aries and Cancer, those are both cardinal signs. You take risks. It's about the challenge. It's about going for it. You're not like sitting back or anything, but that can sometimes be your biggest problem is that you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results because that's just the way you've always done it and somehow you've made it work. But right now it's not working anymore for you. What you've always done is kind of setting you back. And so you can change a little bit. You can just realign you don't have to like align everything just realign and believe in yourself that you are also capable of doing something different and you know like review the details carefully you'll win in the end you'll get what you want in the end but you might have to just take a different approach at it because the intellectual determined focus impulsive you can be impulsive it actually that's not bad but think about it for a minute think on your impulses that's a different approach because you have something that you're missing. And it could be, it, it does like, I mean, there might be a sense of insecurity that you're not even focusing on something different, something where you need to go and nurture yourself. You got cancer, nurture yourself and believe in yourself is also coming from Aries. So it's like you do to an extent, but there's something more for you out in the world. And that, something more like that I think is what your future is trying to tell you it's like you can keep going down this route okay 
keep going down your route, keep pushing through, keep taking those risks, whatever. But there's something better for you if you just listen. And that's like the butterfly effect. You listen right now to this little like moment, this little like, gut instinct about something as tiny as like me doing a different video today or something like that. Like as tiny as you walking a different way to the store or like driving a car instead of taking an Uber, like whatever it could be, like some tiny little thing. You listen to that, that changes the rest of your life. And that's what's happening. Something in your future desires that you make a change now and outside time and space we're getting this right now for you this message listen to it Ch make slight changes you don't have to make sweeping changes i don't think that's what's happening here it's like slight changes slight tiny little niggling niggling changes and replenish yourself be held nurture yourself Nurture, oops, that's not it. Where did you go, lady? And replenish. Cancer, let's replenish. It's very much like, maybe even, you know, go to sleep, take a nap, see what happens, see what your dreams are telling you. Um, you're gonna go, you're, it's gonna be time. It is time for you. You know it's time for you, it's time for you. It just is like, take a step back for a minute. Fix something so that your future is exactly what you want it to be. Anyway, that is what I got for you. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.